Hamas girl summer. University of Chicago protesters made a list of ridiculous demands this week for humanitarian aid that they needed, including Plan B, HIV tests, dental dams, not condoms, and other things that they wanted so that they could protest and remain locked in. Real revolutionaries don't need dental dams, you bitches. Get in there and raw dog like a real them. What did he say? I thought that's what the face masks were doubling as. Dental dam as well. I'm Bridget Fettesy, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the weeks of April 26th to May 9th. I love that they've also been, like, demanding all this sex stuff. We all know none of you are having sex. By the way, we've seen the numbers. You're not having sex in your weird tents at your, like, hippie party. It's a tough thing because you want to have some kind of empathy for these protesters who truly, you. I get it. You see babies and people being killed, and it's your tax dollars hard at work, and you're young, and you're filled with piss and vinegar, and you want to get out there, and you want to protest, and I can totally empathize with that and relate to it. I don't want to, like, sh- on the spirit of the protesters, because I think the good faith interpretation is that they really see something that's happening that's upsetting to them and they want to try and make their voice heard. Now, that being said, you don't have to be so ridiculous. (laughs) Well, I guess it's ultimately a question of what kind of community and obligation Columbia feels it has to its students. Um, Do you want students to die of dehydration and starvation or get severely ill, even if they disagree with you? If the answer is no, then you should allow basic. I mean, it's crazy to say because we're on an Ivy League campus, but this is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Like, could people please have a glass of water? But they 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 did put themselves in that very deliberately in that situation and in that position. So it, it seems like you're sort of saying we want to be revolutionaries. We want to take up this building. Now would you please bring us food and water? Nobody's asking them to bring anything. We're we're asking them to not violently stop us from bringing in basic humanitarian aid. They're stopping the delivery of food? I, we are looking for a commitment from them that they will not stop oh, it. But they haven't stopped it yet. <laughs> we, well, I don't. I'm not. I don't know to what extent it has been attempted, but we're looking for a commitment. I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here because it's getting ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. The DoorDash demonstrators are cracking me up. I'm sorry. You've gone from being kind of LARPing as like a, a, a revolutionary to LARPing as an actual Gazan in Palestine. You're you're like, you're, you're equating yourself to someone in Gaza saying you need humanitarian aid. This is a PhD student, by the way. This woman is not a 19 year old. I'll give a lot more rope to the younger kids. This woman should know better than to try and stand there with a serious face and a dude in a midriff behind her, Hamas girl summer, and say that we are being, we're being de- declined hum- basic humanitarian aid in the United States because they won't let DoorDash through with five guys. <laughs> you're you're gonna make it. She actually said people are gonna die of dehydration or something like that. They're gonna they're gonna end up dehydrated and starving in their library that they've locked themselves in. You guys have convinced yourself, A, you're real revolutionaries when you wouldn't make it a two seconds. If you actually had to go fight in a war, you would all come up with bone spurs immediately. <laughs> all of these Ivy League people would be the first ones looking to for some kind of excuse. They'd all be using their mental health and their trauma to get out of going to war, or they'd be going to Canada or, or shacking up down in Mexico somewhere. They certainly wouldn't be fighting. This is this is not a real thing. This is it's so much LARPing. I mean, I love that they really do think like the fact they can't get five guys delivered to them is an act of war. (laughs) And I love the guy behind her who's standing there like he's guarding her like some kind of gay Dothraki. (laughs) What is with the midriff? (laughs) It is f***ing a Moss Girl Summer. He's got the kafia and the midriff and he's standing there like a bodyguard. What is happening? Macklemore made a video. Yeah. The problem isn't the protest, it's what they're protesting Block the barricade until Palestine is free When I was seven, I learned a lesson from Cuban Easy e What was it again? Oh yeah, f*** 
the police. Who gets the right to defend and who gets the right of resistance has always been about dollars and the color of your pigment. The blood is on your hands, Biden, we can see it all. And fuck no, I'm not voting for you in the fall. My question is, where the F were you when Obama let them cross the line of gassing the Syrians? Where were you all? I didn't see any protesters or hear any protests or have people shutting themselves in and saying, you're not delivering our toothpaste from freaking DoorDash and we're all going to die in here. (laughs) It was a weird, cringy video. It reminded me of the David Guetta video when he was, I know, I'm sure you all remember that moment. It was during George Floyd and he was at a rooftop Zoom party. And he was like, this one's out for the family of George Floyd. Dropped a beat. (laughs) This record is in honor of George Floyd. So shout out to his family. It reminds me of that meme that's like DJs will put anything before they drop the beat. I don't believe in human rights. Somehow Zelensky got thrown under the bus in this video (laughs) as like a a leader who's getting money from our wars. It was an interesting rap video. I get it. Like, I get it. I get using your platform. People were like, this is how you use your platform. Like, is it? (laughs) I mean, it's hard to make jokes about this video because the video is kind of the joke. And he's like, just like my someone said, the police. I'm like, okay, okay, calm down. You're going to be the first guy that calls the police if somebody breaks into your mansion to try. Like some stalker comes to your house and breaks into your mansion and you're the first guy who's calling the cops, Macklemore. All right. I'm not buying that you're some revolutionary either who's going to be like, you know what? I don't need the police. Uh All these people are fucking LARPers, just like I was this past weekend in New York City. (laughs) Oh, yeah. If you want to find out how Bridget's dissident dialogues went... She talks about it behind the paywall. Yeah, I talked about dissident dialogues behind the paywall. I had quite an adventure, let me tell you, especially on my way home. So that's a a reason for you to subscribe. I want to say thank you to all the people who subscribed. Hundreds of you came out in support of our little show that could. It is not anywhere near what we would need to continue to expand and grow this operation as we want to, but it does make a dent and it does make us realize that so many of you are fans and we will keep doing it. And it was a huge boost to my psyche. I needed it. I'm so grateful to you. It really is a very small fraction of our audience who needs to subscribe in order to make a substantial difference in our life. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Many of you said you'd been watching for years and you finally subscribed and it's 50 bucks guys for the whole year. That's nothing. If it's something you love and something that you have loved and you have that extra money, just join us in the community. You get so much stuff for that money too. We try to give you a lot of content. Jaren and I have a podcast behind the paywall. You get workouts, book club. I mean, it's a lot. So join us there. We love you. We're grateful for you. If you can't support us, we understand. But if you can, please do. And To those of you who joined us, welcome to the fam. We're happy to have you. We also have a fun challenge that we're going to be launching this summer. It's not just for subscribers, but we would love to have you involved. And people who are subscribers are the only ones who are going to be able to like post their pictures and stuff with this challenge. So get on in there and get your Hamas Girl Summer on. I'm going to make a Hamas Girl Summer mix because I want to elevate the level of uh, the vibration in this in this part. Let's get this party started and end racism <laughs> and genocide. Drop the beat. <laughs> Drop the bombs. <laughs> this f***ing guy. Governor of South Dakota, Christy Nome's memoir came out. And in it, she had a charming anecdote about how she killed a puppy, a 13-month-old puppy, because it was allegedly some kind of danger to her and her children and her family. And it was in front of a bunch of now-traumatized construction workers. And no one's quite clear why she shared this story publicly in a book. And 
nothing has united our body politic quite like this story. <laughs> it is good to know that America still has a code, and that code is killing a puppy. You have options. Shooting your dog in the face should not be one of them. It is like the equivalent of when a child molester goes to prison. The political equivalent of that, they all the prisoners are united and wanting to kill that one prisoner. <laughs> this is what happened with all the politicians, bipartisan, calling her out for being a sociopath. Not to mention the fact that she was trying to throw all these farmers under the bus. So when she started getting a lot of blowback for this, she would try to act like, oh, it's just those coastal elites who don't know how farm life is, which is incredibly condescending and insulting to farmers. And then all the farmers started talking back and they were like, ah, yeah, we don't shoot our dogs either. <laughs> It was like wild news cycle. And I have finally found something that makes me okay with someone being canceled. <laughs> she actually said, too, that Biden should have shot his dogs. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? In the book, I believe the quote is, Commander, get ready to meet Cricket. Cricket is the poor little puppy that she shot. I mean, have you not seen John Wick, Christy? <laughs> Do you not know Americans love their dogs? We finally found someone who agrees with the Russians and John Wick. It was just a fucking car, just a fucking dog. The irony is, if she had shot anything else in that gravel pit, <laughs> it would probably be a politicized, divided news cycle. People would be standing up for her. Like, she could have shot a person, and it would have been more divisive than this puppy. <laughs> Christy Nome could have shot a homeless person, her in-laws, Gazan protesters, immigrants, her own queer daughter, any one of those things getting shot and it would be like, well, actually, you see, she had a reason for doing that. People would be defending her. Literally, no one's defending <laughs> this woman. If she had shot an immigrant and a gravel bit, it would be a national debate right now. It's also funny, too, because people will be like, oh, we're chopping kids' dicks off, whatever, but she killed a f***ing dog? <laughs> the line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. <laughs> <laughs> the, we have very strange moral lines that we draw in our minds. We're all guilty of it. If anyone thinks they're like this morally righteous person, I, I, I beg you to really look at where you're drawing the lines and where you're not, where your humanity ends and where it begins. We all have weirdness. In her book, she said she met King, Kim Jong-un and like gave him a saucy look or something like that. <laughs> She she said she he wasn't used to someone giving such a dirty look to tyrants and people were like, did this really happen? And it didn't allegedly never met him. But Newsmax was riding her harder than Lewandowski. That's right. I made that joke. And she was just resolute in saying no. I will not talk about my conversations with world leaders. Your claims that you met Kim Jong-un and then I've over the last week, here's the here's the quote from the book. Um, you say that I remember when I met North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. I'm sure he underestimated me, having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. Governor, that never happened. Did what it? I have said in the book is that when I became aware of the content that we had, it changed. And that's the way that it is. So I should not have put that anecdote in the book. Uh, I'm not going to talk an about my meetings. indicates that it happened, I'm right? I'm not going to uh, talk about my conversations with world leaders. Governor, I'm not asking you about the details mm -hmm. of this alleged mm -hmm. meeting. I'm mm -hmm. asking if the meeting actually happened. I don't think it did. And she refused to acknowledge that she was lying. The Newsmax guy basically said, you know, at one point you were on a very short list to be VP for Trump. And now I doubt you're even on that list. Governor, if you asked me a month ago, Who's at the top of the list to run with Donald mm -hmm. Trump? I, I would have said your name. Mm -hmm. um, if you asked me that same question this morning, I don't even think you're on the list. Really? She seems shocked by this, but maybe she thought because of the like 
beautiful dog stuff. You know, the, he's a very beautiful dog. He he died like a dog. <laughs> he died like a dog. I, I can't do it. We'll just cut to Shane Gillis doing it because he's brilliant. Abu Bakar <laughs> Al Baghdadi is dead. He died like a dog. And maybe she thought she was impressing Trump with that story and... I think it backfired quite spectacularly. Thank you, Sheath Underwear. I am obsessed. These little booty shorts are the cutest things you've ever seen. Sheath Underwear is our sponsor, Ride or Die. They've been with us a long time. They have a great product for women and men. I use their bras and their undies. They have lots of different styles of undies, too. They have a thong. They have regular old little undies. And I wear them for pretty much my everyday use all the time. And they are breathable and they balance my pH and they're so soft and they are just luxurious. As for the men, they have boxer briefs. They've got the dual pouch system, which allows the junk to be separated from the family jewels and separated from the legs. Everything has a nice compartment It is fantastic and comfortable and the only underwear my husband wears anymore. It's all I can get him. It's all he wants. Take it from my better half and the true consumer in this household. Go to sheathunderwear.com. Use the code dumpster to get 20% off your whole order. It is Father's Day coming up, so please go out and get your man some new underwear. Lord knows he probably needs them. Go to sheathunderwear.com, use the code DUMPSTER, and get 20% off your entire order. Link is in the description below. Electile dysfunction 2024. Speaking of things that have worms and a history of being shot in the head. (laughs) It's just just a wrong joke. It's a wrong joke. Let's talk about RFK Jr. It was an old story that resurfaced, meaning someone dug it up and brought it back into our consciousness publicly. RFK Jr. had a literal brain worm that he had to treat after it ate a portion of his brain. (laughs) Do... All of our politicians have brain worms? Is this actually what's going on? I mean, I know it's a joke we make a lot about how all of our politicians have brain worms, but it turns out they might actually all have brain worms. (laughs) But what are the brain slugs who control you going to do for the working man? Attach brain slugs to them. Sure, you say that now. Representative Collins made a very inappropriate tweet. You either die a Kennedy with a hole in the brain or you live long enough to be a Kennedy with a hole in the brain, which is a very inappropriate and sensitive joke given, you know, the history of the Kennedys. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing bad ever happens to the Kennedys. What? That's still up. Apparently, he's dying on this hill. I don't even know if he's going to die on it because we don't care about people. We care about dogs. If he had made this joke about the dog, he would be canceled and lose his seat. Yeah, totally. (laughs) Wouldn't it be ironic if there was a vaccination for RFK Jr.'s brain worms and he had to take it? (laughs) Maybe this is what the ivermectin was for. Maybe all of these people were taking ivermectin because it is for worms. Maybe he was taking ivermectin for his brain worms. Can we talk about the fact that RFK Jr. has brain worms? He's nipping at Biden's heels, who has no brain, and they're both losing to Trump. (laughs) And I'm supposed to take anything seriously and be like, this is a tragedy for America. I mean... This is kind of exactly what America deserves. We are a country with brain worms, aging population, pooping in a diaper (laughs) at our trial. (laughs) There was a whole story that just came through that Ben was just sending us about how, like, for some reason, Trump supporters are wearing diapers to his rallies. Oh, because they don't want to leave to go to the bathroom. I don't think so. They don't want to miss anything? No, no. It's like real men wear nappies or something like that. And it's because he's like something about Cohen was making fun of him for f***ing in his pants. And apparently Trump wears diapers. So now they're all like real men wear. I don't know. I don't know. We live in uh, his like cult followers will just go anywhere with him to show their support. Anywhere. (laughs) Anywhere. (laughs) He could even get away with killing a puppy. He might be able to. No, I don't think he's going to get away with killing a puppy. I don't know. No. 
That'd be an interesting experiment. I mean, I do think that he could shoot someone on Fifth Ave. What was his like famous quote? I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and and get away with it. Elected president. I know that that's actually true now. (laughs) Uh, Could Trump get away with shooting a puppy? Yeah, tell question. Maggie in the comments, <laughs> could Trump get away with shooting a puppy? Dave Yates had a really funny joke on his Twitter where you should follow him. He said, we all know it's the second worm on the grassy knoll that you need to worry about. <laughs> I thought that was clever. Go follow Dave and also buy some of his ha ha hot sauce. He's a struggling comedian. He's on the road. I don't know how these freaking guys do it. I would J-time myself in two seconds if I had to be on the road like this. Stay with us, Dave. We're glad to have you. Parade of morons. Oh, well, it's a white liberal woman being racist again. (laughs) Governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, made a gaffe. I don't think it's a gaffe so much as a window into the psyche of a white liberal woman this week where she said the black kids in the Bronx don't even know what a computer is. (laughs) Don't know the word computer. Young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word a computer is. They, they don't know. They don't know these things. It was ridiculous, but it really does go to show something that's more sinister about the Democratic Party, which is this bigotry of low expectations, which we talk about and cover all the time. I mean, the racists on the right are just racist. So I feel like at least they're honest. But the racists on the left really try to hide it with all of their do-gooding fancy language. It also shows something I've been thinking a lot about and that because of America is so you make money in America. It's not something it's like there isn't even a word for it in many other languages. Often you earn money, make money is something that just appears kind of out of the ether. It's a very American ideal. And we tend to think if someone makes money, they're smart. Now, the reverse of that is what you're seeing with Hochul, which is that if someone is poor, they are ignorant and stupid and dumb. And they equate these things together, which is why we have a lot of stupid rich people who think they're smart and a lot of very smart poor people who are told that they're dumb by their fucking leaders. Blacks just ain't capable of the things white people is. That's right. Very good. Do the kids in the Bronx know about electricity? <laughs> Have they heard of vehicles? Do they churn their butter in the Bronx still? <laughs> like what? What an insulting thing to say. If they don't know what a computer is, it's because they all have iPhones in their pockets and they don't need those antiquated things that old ladies like you still use. It's so insanely insulting to assume that kids in the Bronx don't know what a computer is. I can't get my mind around it. And maybe Robin D'Angelo is right to go and have dinners with all these white ladies (laughs) and tell them that they have internalized racism because clearly they do. Now let's check the weather with Diana Alvarado. Alvarado! Déjenme le presento nuestra imagen satelital. Bueno, un sistema eh, de alta presión es lo que domina en estos momentos nuestro territorio. Por eso tuvimos un día soleado y pues los vientos en calma. Thank you, Diana. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons. And the most important thing you can do is share us with a friend. I have been known to red pill the ladies in your life, <laughs> as I was told in New York. Actually, I did have a couple of women come up and say that I was re- I was responsible for red pilling their husband. So oh. you're welcome. <laughs> Conspiracy theories we can get behind. Another Boeing whistleblower died under suspicious circumstances. Another one. One is maybe get away with like what a weird coincidence, even though we all know it's not. Two. Now that's a conspiracy theory. He, Vince, fostered himself. Clearly, I don't understand how these whistleblowers keep dying and everybody's just like, oh, well, we're all just supposed to sit there and take it. Now there are like 10 whistleblowers coming out, too. (laughs) And the like whistleblower hitman is like, (laughs) they keep multiplying. (laughs) So many more people I have to make it look like they J-Town to themselves. They Vince fostered themselves. I feel like my my audience will get that. I would just like to state for the record that we here at Dumpster Fire thinks 
Boeing makes a very fine aircraft. <laughs> we are very impressed with their craftsmanship. And anytime we get on a Boeing, we make sure we send a lovely review and tweet out that it's a fantastic piece of equipment, a marvel of which li- the likes of which we've never seen. And we hope that they're listening to this right now. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> Please. Please don't send your Boeing hitman after us. <laughs> they need to send Christy Gnome out against these whistleblowers. Comedy's last stand. Tom Brady was roasted on Netflix live this past week, and I will tell you that comedy is back, my friends. We held the line. I'll see it online. They'll be like, is it me or is retarded and gay coming back? Or, hey, retarded and gay is making a comeback. Some of us never stopped using it. (laughs) Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? We here at Dumpster Fire are proud to be part of the people who held the line for all of you so you can say retarded and gay. (laughs) But it was just no holds barred. Everybody, I mean, Tony Hinchcliffe and Nikki Glaser had some of the most immaculate roasting sets I've ever seen done in roasting. I personally never really liked roasting, although I'm getting more and more into it because I realize it's mostly what I do on this show the entire time is just roast our elite ourself one another, the poor, the old, the fats, the rich, we all get roasted, but it was a nice kind of like, ah, like, okay. Kevin Hart was being, you know, making his gay jokes. Like everybody got mad there. I am a little bit upset because I'm not sure. I wonder what the audience was like. Like, were these people who were getting mad about these jokes four years ago? Because it was in Los Angeles that this was filmed. So if this was something where you were one of those a-holes who was like, me, we're in a post-comedy world and jokes are about punching down or punching up and you should only be using your... No, no. Jokes are for everyone. (laughs) No one's outside of jokes. Jokes punch in all directions. Jokes punch. Punch wildly <laughs> like an animal fighting for its life. <laughs> Jokes punch down and up and they kick and they scream. And they're not always going to hit the right target. They're sometimes going to be wrong. They're sometimes going to hurt people's feelings. Giselle got mad because she was like, oh, they're making fun of our family. You know what? Maybe you shouldn't have had sex with your jujitsu instructor. Okay. That's not ridiculous. That's not ridiculous to say that. How about... You take the sanctity of your family seriously as well. He clearly didn't. (laughs) He got made fun of for Bridget Moynihan. You should have been happy about that joke, Giselle. I mean, Aaron Hernandez's fiance was mad. She was like, oh, the jokes were cruel. You know what else is cruel? Murder. (laughs) Killing people is crueler than whatever jokes they're making about your fiance killing two people. Okay, let's just be clear here. Everyone has it coming. We all do. It was amazing. And you know who we can thank for this? Dave Chappelle. He held the line for Netflix. Yeah. He basically went out there and said F off. And then Netflix was like, okay, most popular stand up we've ever had. Then they had Shane Gillis and they've got now they've got the roast and Tony Hinchcliffe was on it. Andrew Schultz. Let me tell you, Tony Hinchcliffe has sold out Madison Square Garden for Kill Tony, which is like the second largest comedy podcast in the world. The largest live live podcast podcast in the world. Also, Andrew Schultz sold out two nights at Madison Square Garden. Two nights. That's 20,000 people. It is bananas. Like comedy's actually never been better. There's tons of people wanting to become comedians. In Austin, there's like, you can do as many sets in Austin in a night as you can in New York City in many nights. It is a fantastic time for comedy. We need it. We held the line. I'm worried about what's going to happen if Trump gets elected. So maybe enjoy this while you can before everybody gets their undies in a bunch and their nappies in a bunch and they clench their little anus and all of the humor gets sucked out of the room by people who have no sense of humor. And I will tell you this, if it comes down to me voting between a guy with brain worms and a guy who has no brain and is like clearly Obama is our president and a guy who's maybe not a great character of a person and also corrupt, but hilarious, (laughs) (laughs) I might have to vote for the funny man. 
You've probably already heard of Bone Charge, the holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. I've been using their red light face mask and it's amazing. In fact, somebody commented on one of my pictures Clearly that red light face mask is working recently, and it is. Getting older sucks, and red light therapy has been reviewed in over 4,000 peer-reviewed studies, with 400 plus being double-blind placebo trials. Not one has shown any negative side effects. I am loving my Bone Charge red light face mask. I use it for 10 minutes every night. It boosts collagen elastin production. It's super lightweight on the face. It doesn't get hot. It's got near infrared and red light, and you can switch between between them. Other problems with red light face mask helps with are wrinkles, fine lines, sore jaw, eczema, migraines. The list is endless, truly. If you forgot about Mother's Day and you're feeling very, very bad, as you should be, this Bone Charge red light, it's a great late gift. Go to bonecharge.com slash Bridget and use coupon code Bridget to save 15% off. That's a great deal. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash Bridget and use coupon code Bridget to save 15% off. And the link is in the description below. Dumpster diving. What's next in the dumpster? (laughs) The Boy Scouts changed their name to Scouting America after five years ago accepting girls. They changed their name to Scouting America. The end of an era, as the pedophiles like to call it, scouting the talent. (laughs) You know, it's really funny because conservatives, of course, everything's a culture war. And they were like, this is what happens when you let girls into bed. And I'm like, yeah, they have seen a massive drop off in their membership, much like the church. And much like the church, you have a pedophile problem. (laughs) And everybody wants to act like it's wokeness. No, it's men diddling little boys and girls. You know, it seems like the moment you get out of the city, all your problems just sort of fade away. Why don't we address the real problem in the room? I don't know why I'm talking like this. (laughs) It feels appropriate to talk about pedophiles in a way that is old timey. It's just so funny to me that you're going to be like, you know, the actual problem is wokeness. And that is part of the problem. The other part is the 82,000 people who came forward and said they were molested and the billions of dollars they had to pay out in damages. Guys, guys. Can we be more mad about the pedophiles than the wokeness is killing the Boy Scouts? It's like the war on masculinity. Yeah, it's a war on masculinity by pedophiles. <laughs> 82,000 cases of sexual assault and all you needed to do was touch one dog and everybody would have been in an uproar. <laughs> Andrew Tate is going to come in and see this opening and start like man scouts. <laughs> <laughs> And we all know that's what Andrew Tate is really looking for, a good man. <laughs> it's funny, too, because Girl Scouts is still Girl Scouts, and I have long had an issue with Girl Scouts because I hated it and got kicked out because I wanted to do all the boys' stuff. I thought it was BS that we got to learn how to sew a patch on our little freaking skirt or whatever, our, our sash, and the guys all got to freaking learn how to start a fire in the woods and do cool stuff. And so I was always mouthing off, like, why are we baking a chocolate cake and they're learning how to you know set a trap for an animal i do think the messaging is very strange in the girl scouts where it's like hey girls put on a little skirt go take your cookies and sell them on the corner and give a cut (laughs) to your met to the man the dads of girl scouts are literal sugar daddies because they're (laughs) buying up all the cookies and it's a competition It just feels like it's the wrong message to be sending our young girls. Go shake your little skirt-wearing bum-bum down on the street and sell those cookies, girls. That's how you get your approval and and your validation. (laughs) Breaking Bridget. Apple had their whatever they have, their launch of a new iPad. And they came out with a a commercial that is insanely tone deaf. And it was basically everything you love being crushed in a steel press down into just a small, flat, thin, soulless black mirror. It was 
actually disturbing to watch because it was like a metronome, a guitar, instruments, works of art, all kinds of lovable characters, a sculpture. You can see it. It's it's so I don't know. It's like deeply upsetting. And I'm I'm not sure they they underestimate like how much 90s nostalgia there is in the just zeitgeist right now and how much people are kind of longing for analog because we're the last generation that will remember it. And we're all getting older. And like everyone reacted to it negatively. They were like, people should be fired for this. And a very talented filmmaker reversed it and put another Sonny and Cher song on. It's funny, too, they left out U2. After we were all graped by that U2 album. At this point, the iPad is almost as small as the child's hands who made it. It's just symbolism. They can't put the Chinese children between that press who are being crushed by our technocratic society that's stealing the life out of everything that we know and love by physical media download dumpster fire and put it on cds <laughs> anyway i found it very upsetting and also like a unironically perfect metaphor for what's happening to everything that we know and love in real life and in society is being just sucked into the the black mirror blob of you know nothingness anyways on that light note (laughs) we're glad we're here with you in the void that is your i mean the ipad does look pretty sweet i get what they were trying to say i get it it's like everything that you you used to be have like millions of things to do is now in one place but it's very like seeing the like the paint. destruction of it. Oh yeah. god! Like, it's so it was so upsetting. I was like, this is making me want to cry, and it was making me just want to be in real life and buy physical media and spend money on like instruments and and I feel like I'm gonna have the fucking basement that the guy in V is for Vendetta had, you know, uh-huh. like, <laughs> books and art and and things that are gonna be banned and the creepy thing too is like how they can change these books and these works of art just digitally you like have a book that they don't like or something in it and then the diversity readers go through and say this is offensive and then you just get a new upload and the book is changed yeah. it's all creepy that's just all creepy it can make it all disappear they can make me disappear just like the Boeing hitman fantasy news I really want to say I am so appreciative of you guys who showed up for us. Truly, it really does mean something to us. I was getting emotional seeing all of your messages. It's so wonderful to have you all in the community. Please join us at Fetacy.com if you are able. We're going to get through this together. We're all going to get brain worms together. It's fine. Just accept. Just accept our Lord and Savior, the brain worm, into your heart. If Dumpster Fire helps you get through the insanity. That's Please good enough subscribe. for us. Yeah. Or if you can't, we get it. Just watch and tell your friends and like and comment yeah. and do all the things. I saw so many of you and met you in New York City. It was awesome to have you come out and shake your hand and hug you. I love you right back. Thank you for coming out and seeing me in person and supporting me at one of the hardest gigs I have literally ever done in my life. I appreciate you guys so much. Just truly. You all really like... It sometimes feels like I'm in this black box screaming by myself and seeing a lot of you in person and hearing from you and seeing you subscribe really bolstered my spirit at a time that I really needed it. So I I appreciate you more than you will ever know. I look forward to meeting more of you in person. Thank you to everyone who makes Dumpster Fire possible. All in the description below. Thank you to our sponsors, Sheath Underwear and Bone Charge. Please support the people who support us. Um, Bone Charge is amazing. Get this gift for a woman that you love in your life or a man. It's an amazing, amazing, luxurious luxury it makes you feel like you're on a private jet one of the other people that i was happy to see at dissident dialogues and i am happy to partner with is ground news check your media bias read news from multiple sources they do really great work i live for my blind spot uh newsletter that i get where it's like things that i probably wouldn't have heard about because of whatever media bubble i'm in and it's often a lot of things that i probably wouldn't have heard about so i am in a clear media bubble as much as i try and consume all the things that I can 
Confirmation bias is real, folks, and we need to work against it so we can become even more radicalized. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to our audience supporters, you watching this. We love you. And now to cleanse your ballot, the internet is glorious. You can know a lot, you can know a little, but whatever you know, just don't blow the whistle. Joshua Dean had a memory keen, he was strong and he ran every day. But his lungs turned to goo and he had a stroke to at 46, he was sent on his way. Swampy Barnett loved his mother and he took a lot of pride in his work. He found 300 reasons why a plane couldn't fly and now he's over his head in the dirt. Fire for the weeks of April 26th to May 9th. I'm Bridget Fettesy. Now make me rich! We're gonna have a good summer, folks. It's gonna be a fun one, hopefully. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns.